Hey guys, this is Chris Kessler, and I'm gonna give you a quick overview on the Inquiry Labs, uh, the newest labs from Kessler Science. First of all, the non-negotiables we set out when building these labs were one, they needed to be easy to follow for teachers and students. Two, they needed to be differentiated for all learners. Three, they needed to focus on student-centered learning. Four, they needed to include the CER model as a conclusion. And five, and maybe most importantly, they needed to be editable. This is everyone's favorite part. I can hear the hooray across the internet you know, as we sit here. Let's dig in and take a look at these so you have a, a much better understanding of what's out there. The first part we're gonna look at is the teacher resource page. And what you'll see is um, the teacher resource page has is the way we differentiated each of the labs, and it has some information about the CER model. We'll get into more of those in just a few minutes. The next page is gonna be the teacher's page. And the teacher direction is gonna come with every single one of the labs. It's going to have the standards that are addressed. It's gonna have um, some general information about uh, the partners and how you should set it up, some guidelines. It's going to have, uh, like I mentioned, the standards. It's gonna have some teacher notes, uh, the materials per group that you're gonna to need to acquire before doing the lab, and then some additional resources for this particular topic. Next, the essential questions and background. This is the first student page we're gonna take a look at. And the first thing the students are gonna have are, is an essential question. For example, how does gravity and inertia affect Earth's tides? This is something that I would go over with the students uh, prior to doing the lab or right before they're actually gonna get their hands, uh, hands dirty and start working on the experiment, as well as the background of the phenomena. I would go over, the, you know, um, over this information with those students at that time as well because you know how students are they're not going to read this information by themselves they're just going to skip right to the part where it says to, to do something and, and start working on that so this is kind of like the instructions and some background that need to be covered first this could be uh, used as a class set uh, wouldn't need to be printed out for everyone either and then also we're going to have the materials list on each one of the groups so as I'm going through these sample labs, I'm pulling pages from different labs just to show you that the format is all the same throughout all of the labs. Next, we're gonna take a look at the leveling of the lab. So we've decided to level the labs with different icons. And the first level uh, that is included with all of the labs is the dependent inquiry labs. These are great for most on-level students. Uh, they are gonna be a combination of procedural and inquiry questions and they're gonna have moderate teacher involvement. You're still there to help, but it is a student-centered activity. And then lastly, the CER and the reflections at the end of the lab are gonna be open-ended uh, to allow for reflection and uh, students to get creative with their responses. So uh, as I mentioned, all of these labs are gonna be differentiated. You're gonna get three different labs for every uh, topic. So for example, on this one, Turger Pressure, you would have three labs. Now, they're not actually different labs, they're just modified one way or the other. So uh, they're still doing the same activity, just in a, in a differentiated um, fashion. So the next uh, modification would, or excuse me, the next um, version of the lab would be called the Modified Inquiry Lab. And this is great for students that are below level or have IEPs, uh, they provide it, this, this kind of version provides the most structured lab experience. It's gonna eliminate some of the redundancies. Maybe it takes out some sampling, it takes out some um, questions that you know, may not need to be in there, but still you know, get the point across of the lab. So just, uh, you know, just like you would do normal uh, modification on a, a test or an assessment or, a, or an activity in your classroom. And then the CER and the reflections often include sentence stems at the end. So you can see the conclusion or the CER on this particular lab actually has sentence stems to allow the students to, uh, to formulate their, their CER at the end of the lab. And then lastly, the independent inquiry labs are taking the totally opposite approach. We're now allowing the students to create their own labs. This is great for uh, advanced students, uh, it's great for a lot of the NGSS standards that um, 
that, that want students creating uh, experiments or demonstrations on their own. So these are gonna be giving the students some type of shell to work with and some directions, but really the lab they need to come up with on their own. Occasionally we will provide some tables they can fill out, but sometimes they're gonna be creating their own tables. So obviously this is the most student-centered experience and least teacher led. So you have limited teacher involvement here. That's not to say that the kids are on their own, but this is, uh, this is really meant, you, you know, you're facilitating at this point rather than getting involved and letting them um, find their experiences on their own and their, do their own exploration. The CER and reflections are there because I still think they're important, but they are open-ended at the end. So you're gonna get all three of those uh, variations in each lab. All the activities are going to be student-centered. That's, that's the focus here. We want to make sure that uh, students are collecting data, they're analyzing data, they're creating charts and graphs, they're writing down observations. That's the whole point of these inquiry labs. They are hands-on experiences. And science is much more valuable when students are actually doing the science. Along the or throughout the labs, they're going to have check for understanding. So these are kind of inquiry questions that are, are, are in the middle of the labs and they may be extending um, a piece of information from the lab. Um, in, in this example, they're explaining why chloroplasts are not seen in onion skin cells. And so they're coming up with their own explanation for some of these real world um, experiences. So you're going to have those check for understandings throughout each of the different labs. So you can kind of see the format on all the pages is gonna be similar. All the titles are gonna be the same. You're gonna have the, uh, the logos up at the top to show which uh, differentiation. All the check for understanding is gonna have the same color gray scale in the background. The font's gonna be the same. And we use Verdana font because uh, that is the font that most standardized tests are written in. So a lot of research went into to, to putting these things together. Um, and, and when I say research, I, I, we we interviewed hundreds of teachers across uh, across the country to come up with the uh, the kind of format that that we ultimately settled on. So you're going to see a, a good um, standard across all of these different labs. And then lastly, at the end, I mentioned that the CER model is going to be included. This is their claim and evidence and reasoning statement, and I'm not going to get into exactly. Um, what that is because uh, you're, you're likely doing this in your class. If you're not already, this is something very easy to implement into your class. And I provided you links within each lab on, on how you can implement that in your class. Um, I've, I provided a link to a great video that explains what the CER model is and how it benefits students and, um, and how they can start writing these step, statements on their own. So this would be the, the student lab sheet. This is the kind of the answer document at the back of the lab. And this would be, you know, probably what you would take a look at to grade, uh, at least a portion of, you know, a portion of your grade would come from this, this area right here. So the benefits of the labs are pretty straightforward. You're gonna save tons of time thousands of hours have gone into developing these labs and you're going to just save tons of prep time and get back to teaching rather than than prepping your labs you're going to increase the engagement and when you increase the engagement of your students you're also going to re increase that retention of your students you're going to meet the needs of all your students now you're going to be differentiating for everyone in your class the best part is you could be running really three different labs that are modified to the students needs all at the same time, you know, across a class and it, and it be, um, it, pretty seamless, a pretty, pretty seamless experience. So the growing inquiry bundle, it allows you to make science come alive. 